Hi everybody, welcome to Dr. Manny's YouTube workshops. In this workshop we'll be discussing evidence-based practice. The learning objectives are to review what is evidence-based practice, where does evidence-based practice fit into nursing, why evidence-based practice is a trend and an issue, how evidence is incorporated into nursing, and the challenges of research in nurses and for nurses. What then is evidence-based practice? Well, evidence-based practice is the conscientious use of current best evidence in making decisions about patient care. It's the collection, evaluation and integration of valid research evidence combined with clinical expertise and an understanding of the patient and family values and their preferences, and these inform clinical decision making. The evidence-based practice triad consists of patient values, best research evidence, and clinical expertise. This is evidence-based medicine and evidence-based practice. We're looking at improved patient outcomes, and these are reflected in individual clinical expertise, best available clinical evidence, and again, patient values and their expectations. This is the evidence-based practice triad. So I want you to consider, what is the rationale of evidence-based practice in nursing? You can answer true or false. Rational one, true or false. Evidence-based practice converts research data into an answerable clinical question. True or false? The answer is true. Rationale 2. Evidence-based practice integrates research evidence into clinical decision-making. This is true or false? The answer is true. Rationale 3. Evidence-based practice reveals the best evidence to answer a clinical question. Is this true or is it false? The answer is true again. Rationale 4. Evidence-based practice critically appraises the evidence for validity, effect and applicability. Is this true or false? The answer is true. So the rationale for evidence-based practice then is to use best evidence available to make patient care decisions. It involves innovation in terms of finding and translating the best evidence into clinical practice. Another question for you to consider. Are research and evidence-based practice synonymous? Are they the same thing? Yes or no? You consider. Evidence-based practice has got a pyramid. The top of the pyramid represents the strongest evidence with filtered evidence and critically appraised topics, CAT. And this includes systemic reviews, meta-analysis and critical appraisals. A CAT, critically appraised topics, is a short summary of the best available evidence created to answer a specific clinical question. At the base of the pyramid is unfiltered evidence, which includes randomized controlled trials, cohort studies and case reports. These are individual reports and studies that are also known as the primary literature. There are levels of evidence, and when looking at levels of evidence, you should seek the highest level, which is one to three, of evidence available. But remember that evidence at the top might not exist for your clinical question. In that case, you'll need to move down to levels four to seven to find the strongest evidence that addresses your clinical question. Level one is a systematic review. 
A systematic review focuses on a clinical topic and answers a specific question. A thorough literature search is conducted to identify all the studies using a sound methodology. You have to evaluate it. The studies are evaluated and the results are summarized according to the pre-selected criteria and no quantitative statistical analysis is done. Then you've got another level one being meta-analysis and it carefully examines a number of credible studies on a topic and combines the result using quantitative statistical methodology. It's a higher quality systematic review and therefore it is at the top of the pyramid. It uses the databases to limit search to systematic review and meta-analysis. Then you've got level two, a randomized controlled trial. And this is carefully planned and studies the effect of a therapy on patients. It includes methodologies that reduce the potential for bias, randomization and blinding, and it allows for a comparison between intervention groups and control groups. A level four cohort study takes a large population and follows the patients who have a specific condition or receive a particular treatment over time and compares them with other groups that have not been affected by the condition or the treatment being studied. Cohort studies are observational and not as reliable as randomized controlled studies since the two groups may differ in ways other than variables under the study. Then you've got level six. Level six is a case control study. And this is an observational study in which patients who already have a specific condition, the case group, are compared to people who do not have the problem, the control group. These studies are usually less reliable than the randomized control trials and cohort studies. If it's showing a statistical relationship, it does not mean that one factor necessarily towards the other. These studies look back into time and patient records are usually reviewed. Another level six is a case report. A case report consists of collections of reports on treatment of individual patients or a report on a single patient because they are reports of cases and use no control groups with which to compare outcomes. They have no statistical validity. They are the six levels. Now, when we review databases, databases are always reviewed searching for evidence-based research. And you've got lots of them. Lots of them there. I've just included a few for an example. When applying evidence-based practice into nursing, there are essentially five steps. And the five steps of evidence-based practice are clinical, uncertainty from practice is converted into focused, structured questions. The focused, structured questions are used as a basis for the literature search to identify relevant evidence from the research. The research evidence is critically appraised for validity and applicability, and the best evidence is used alongside clinical expertise, the patient's preference, and available resources to plan care. Outcomes are then evaluated through a process of self-reflection, audit, and peer assessment. So where do the research questions originate from? Your questions. Think about it. Where do they come from? They can come from a nurse's clinical practice concerns, Therapeutic care, efficacy and effectiveness, advancing quality care. It could be public health issues, which we've all been exposed to. Elements of the question involve the PICO formula as one tool. There are many, many tools, and even modifications of the PICO formula are available. I'm choosing the most basic, just to introduce you to the concept if you don't already know it. P stands for patient population or problem. I stands for intervention, C stands for comparison, 
O stands for outcome. The acronym is used to help formulate a well-defined, researchable or searchable question. This is PICO explained, the patient or the problem. So for example, it describes a group of patients similar to your own. An example could be in elderly patients with congestive heart failure. The intervention, what intervention are you considering? Does the treatment use diuretics, such as spironolactone or furuzumide? Then you compare the intervention. What's the main alternative to the intervention? So when compared with standard therapy alone, for example here, fluid restriction. What are the outcomes? What do you hope to accomplish with the intervention? Well, it could lead to a decrease in hospitalization or side effects. Other examples could be P, children with otitis media, adults with microhematuria, adults less than 70, healthy adolescents. The interventions could be antibiotics, IVP, TIA, routine scoliosis screen. C could be no treatment except acetaminophen for pain or fever, a CT scan, no TIA, no screening, evaluation only if there are problems. Or O, no pain after two days, diagnostic accuracy, rates of cerebral vascular ascone within 90 days, pain, disability, need for intervention. Just some examples. So how do nurses start with evidence-based practice? Well, define the patient's problem is number one. Identify information needed to solve the problem. Perform a literature search and do a critical analysis. Obtain a clinical answer for the patient's problem. Develop clinical guidelines or a protocol. Evaluate the guidelines or a protocol. Establish practice guidelines and then communicate, disseminate the information. What are some of the six steps? This is just one method. The six steps in the evidence-based practice process are one, ask a clinical question. Two, Search for best evidence. Three, critically appraise the evidence. Four, integrate the evidence with one's clinical expertise. Five, evaluate the outcomes of the evidence-based practice decision. And six, disseminate the outcome. Another question for you to consider. Is using evidence-based practice important for nurses, for the nursing profession, for you, for your career? Well, evidence-based practice in nursing, what does it do? It facilitates nursing care, it defines best practices, it enhances nursing efficiency, it ensures nursing care advances, it employs new knowledge developments and it improves patient outcomes and satisfaction. How can evidence be merged into education and practice for nurses? Well, the educational setting, for one, provides an environment in which nurses and students learn about the research process. Students are given an opportunity to explore different theories and evaluate them in light of research findings. Research projects are typically part of the criteria for all nurses in order to graduate. They learn research methods, which provides an understanding of the research process, it encourages participation in research activities and enables students to become intelligent research consumers, whether quantitative or qualitative. Or mixed method. Nurses as consumers. Remember, nurses as knowledgeable consumers must have knowledge about the research process. They must have aptitude to evaluate information logically. They must have skills to apply the knowledge gained and they must have the ability to conduct research. Research in current contemporary nursing in Western developed countries, academic nurses and senior clinical nurses are the primary researchers and utilize research in the clinical evidence-based practice. Nurses have to interpret, evaluate and determine the credibility of research findings for 
be evidence-based practice. And all nurses are expected to be proactive with research within the domain of the clinical practices. Nurses as researchers then must be able to determine that research is noteworthy but requires further investigation before application into practice. Findings must be considered for utilisation and application into evidence-based practice. A question to consider, are there barriers regarding evidence-based practice globally? Well, there are. There's a shortage of nurses that understand research. There's a talent gap. There's no organisational support to develop evidence-based nursing as most organisations, certainly the private sector. There's a lack of commitment to improving and changing practice. A culture of inquiry, evidence-based culture, is lacking in the healthcare environment. There's an absence of active managerial leadership, and there's something referred to as the Plato Gap. They or there are those who know, but do not act. And they are those who act, but they do not know. Which basically means the people that know how to do the research don't do it, and the people who don't know how to do it do. There's also the denial of value. Is it really of any value? There's also a difficulty in changing practice because their attitude is we've always done it this way and we're not changing now. There's a lack of knowledge. And look, there is insufficient time at times. But a lot of research has been done by nurses during the COVID period as well, despite an overwhelming patient worldwide. Research reports are not readily accessible or available, and often there's difficulty interpreting research reports, especially those with statistical evidence. Another question to consider, what strategies could be employed to support evidence-based practice? Well, the strategies could be leaders need to support and encourage the culture of evidence-based practice. Medical librarians need to teach researchers and healthcare providers how to search. Healthcare providers and researchers need the time to critically appraise studies and implement findings. Researchers need to be taught how to write clear reports that can be translated into practice. And there have to be evidence-based practice mentors available and accessible. So, in conclusion, evidence-based practice of knowledge and skills are required. A culture that supports evidence-based practice is required, which provides tools to sustain evidence-based care. And look, there has to be a belief in the value of evidence-based practice with effective evidence-based practice mentors. So in conclusion, evidence-based practice in nursing guarantees care interventions are based on data from research which ensures that clinical practices are appropriate, safe, and of high quality. Nurses must therefore develop a culture of inquiry to support and maintain this process, which we call evidence-based practice. Remember, demand evidence and think critically. Let's review. Evidence-based practice converts research data into an answerable clinical question True or false? The answer is true. Evidence-based practice integrates research evidence into clinical decision-making. True or false? The answer is true. Evidence-based practice critically appraises the evidence for validity, effect and applicability. Is this true or false? The answer is true.